Systems work, people fail. Welcome to InsureMark's Advisor Mentorship Podcast with Vice President Jeremy Hauser. As human beings, we instinctively want to share and connect, and that means effective communication. But Jeremy Hauser, during these summer months, conversations usually center on ways to stay cool, right? So how is your summer shaping up? Yeah, summer's been busy, very busy. We actually have done a couple of podcast episodes this summer that kicked things off. We had a a crazy uh, amount of downloads for our recent one with Robert Schiller Mm -hmm. and Jeremy Siegel. That went really well. Advisors got a lot of good insight from that particular episode. We had one recently also following that one with uh, Milligan. It was the Entrepreneur Blueprint where advisors got to listen to a top professional in the industry, does everything 100% virtually. So started off well with podcasts. Uh, We did a little traveling here. I went to actually some of my advisors' offices this summer. We also, this uh, summer, we have a lot of training events here at InsureMark, and we got a baby coming in July. So we got a (laughs) lot of things. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we got number number three on the way. And so um, entrepreneurial spirit in mind for myself, I got to figure out something as we have uh, that uh, the third child coming, so our little boy at the end of July, and looks like the office is going to become a nursery here. So I'll be in the process of switching things up on some of these uh, recordings. So we got a lot, uh, but yeah, literally earlier this week, I was just traveling to a couple of advisors' offices, and one of those was uh, Milligan, who was in Virginia, Mike, Norfolk, Mike Virginia. Milligan. Mike Milligan. Yeah, Mike Mike Milligan. Um, he was on the recent podcast episode that we recorded, and incredible Norfolk, Virginia. So I was up by you. I went to Virginia, and I also went to Pennsylvania. So, um, and you didn't stop in. Oh, I mean, I oh, was. Pennsylvania's it was, right across the river. Less than less than twenty four hours spent in uh, Pennsylvania, so it, it was um, really nice, uh, small little town in in PA. Um, weather was amazing, by the way. So mm-hmm. it's ninety five here with humidity, but up there it was like seventy five, eighty. It was beautiful, yeah. beautiful sun. Um, yeah. So, and I know you're. Where are you again? In New Jersey, Central New Jersey. That's right. Yeah. It was interesting because I, whenever I got um, the airport, I landed in PA for that particular trip. I didn't realize, you know, you take one turn and you're in a different state. And I'm used to like, you can drive 12 hours in Texas and still be in Texas. It's crazy. You're absolutely right. That we make a wrong turn here and you could end up on Staten Island. It's <laughs> yeah. I just want to jump back to the, the Siegel Schiller podcast. I thought that was phenomenal. They are, they're icons in in Mm -hmm. economics and they just spoke so well they did they did a good job and i think um majority of people that are tuning into it it was longer than usual so it was about an hour long of an episode um but i mean i didn't want to get them to stop they even talked a little bit as those that have already listened to it about their own personal um relationship of just knowing each other for however so long um they met in grad school the first day of grad school that's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, they actually, some of the predict, uh, predictions, um, there's a lot going on. I mean, I just <clears throat> sent out something to my team earlier um, and just with regards to like Saudi Arabia, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but they just ended their 80 year relationship with the petrodollar <laughs> this week. Yeah. So um, markets are, who knows, who knows what's going on uh, everywhere, not just domestically, but globally. And um this year. And it was a great episode to get some good insight from some good academic um, uh, economists. So yeah, a lot going on this summer for sure. So you said you went to see Mike Milligan. He was on the podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. What prompted that trip? Um, I've been meaning to get out there. So I've for for a while now was supposed to uh, go out there last year and something came up. And then um, obviously we have our third child on the way. So it'll be a little tougher to Mm -hmm. move and shake. And it was just good timing with uh, us also having a podcast episode. So wanted to um, get out there, meet his team. And really what prompted it, especially was the fact that over the last, we talked about on the podcast, he's gone from two staff members up to now north of 10, um, over 12. And I think he's possibly hiring one or two other people by the end of this year. So a lot of um, not just seeing his office, a lot of those, uh, it, 
those people that actually work with this company do work remote. So even though I was in their office and I was doing some good one-on-one calls and meetings with some of their team internally, we did a lot of Zoom calls as well too with the others that actually work outside of his office. And so very busy day. I mean, back to back to back. So uh, I can understand that his time is very, uh, very limited on certain things that he can do because he's got to make sure that uh, he is maximizing his time in front of people when it comes to customers and then everybody else is being delegated to others. So um, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting to actually chat with each one of them. They all have different roles. They all have um, a good vision of the company. And that's really what it comes down to is something that one of my key takeaways from that particular event was just the fact that every one of them knows what the vision is for the organization. And they're all aligned to, uh, the, not just the vision, but also trying to be the best at what they do to provide some value. So it was good. Um, and one of the other biggest lessons I learned from actually at that at that event, and as you have more and more people on staff. So in Shermark itself, we have about we have over thirty um, thirty people here at in Shermark. So I already knew this kind of going into it, but for their team as they're continuing to grow, the importance of just having communication when you are having individuals that are not all in the same office. And since he is a hundred percent virtual, he has a lot of different people across the country that work with his company. Um, So how important it is to just make sure everybody's on the same page, getting the right messaging and communicating to make sure everything's just moving quicker and at the right speed. Talk, Talk to me about processes too, because if you've got so many people virtually working, you've got to, as you say, you've got to be on the same page. You've got to be doing things the same way. And you talk about process all the time. Yeah. it And he ended up hiring recently somebody to help out with uh, some of those systems and processes. So he has uh, one specific individual he just hired. Um, she's actually, her job is just growth. So growth for the organization. And that's really where making sure button things up, um, just making sure systems and processes are good all the way from communication in between appointments, communicating amongst staff and team. So if some people are on certain weekly calls with the team itself, just to get updates, some people may not need to be on those particular calls. So just really just fine tuning. So although a business can still be having a lot of good success and growing, you still want to make sure that you're trimming, not necessarily trimming the fat for um, not people, but like trimming the fat of just being very specific on if we're going to have a 15, 30 minute meeting, we want the right people on there who that actually need to be on that specific meeting, make sure we're covering what we need to cover and any objections, any issues that are coming about, we really need to make sure that we are knocking that out in that small time frame itself. So, um, almost hiring somebody just to be specifically systems and prospects and or a system and process for your business and just focusing on how they can uh, get more efficient is, uh, is yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty huge. And then tech, I mean, financial technology, it's just evolved over and over. Um, they have a lot of good systems already in place um, that are already successfully working, but there are things that could be cleaned up on uh, some other um, avenues when it comes to CRM or possibly when it comes to, um, if somebody has to make notes for that previous call to get documentation together. So they're always looking and we're always looking for our advisors for the best type of recording platforms when you're doing your virtual meetings to where if your team is having to listen to those, to put stuff together, you want to make sure they're not having to listen to a whole 45 minute to an hour phone call. You want to have some type of platform in there that can help break down the summary of the call, but then give you the main points of where to go in the conversation to see how it went. So a lot, a lot with systems and processes for them and um, really just checking our six. So making sure their whole team as new people come in, we want to make sure that they're they're brand new. So even though some people may have been there for a couple of years, everybody has a starting point at some point. So we wanted to make sure, and that's why when I was there, I really went back through the basics of some of the financial technology their organization uses with ours, what some of our top advisors do with their team. So it was just really just, uh, like I said, checking your six, that military mm-hmm. term, just making sure they know where all these things are. 
here you're talking about bringing things to at least Mike's operation that can help. You mentioned some of them. Mention a few more. And then if an advisor is listening and says, you know, I want access to some of this too, how can they do that? Yeah. So they, they definitely, um, when reaching out to a team, I mean, any advisor at all in our space. So our company really helps out with building out financial technology for companies and not having to be as an advisor, the guinea pig for a lot of these things. We've had a proven track record with other producers. That's why when they go to our website, so they went to insuremarkamp.com forward slash Jeremy, you'll hear advisors talk about what they utilize within our company. And I'd say one of the difference makers is how we're helping advisors, um, not just run parallels to their live world. So still doing a lot of in-person meetings and doing the traditional way of marketing in your own town, but we've started to really level up what we do on the virtual stance. So we're able to help advisors grow on a national scale as opposed to just domestically. And in order to do that, you have to have the right financial technology to do so. And so our team probably has, if not the best, um, the best actual eco chamber of financial technology to help the producers have a competitive advantage over other advisors when it comes to just product analysis and also the uh, financial technology to actually be efficient in your time. So recording these type of videos, leveraging podcasts, leveraging different type of social media um, resources to help get your brand out there. So our team has been doing a lot of that for our advisors. So when they reach out, that's what we do. And I think one of the big eye-opening things, and this is something that um, I kind of really took note of, is that within his office when we were there, he recently hired a, his own personal assistant. So although he had people that were delegated certain tasks, so he actually has a personal assistant now. And I can just tell that that just takes a lot of weight off your shoulders as the decision maker, because you have somebody there that can help just keep you scheduled, keep you um, instead of having to spend time. I mean, the back and forth of just try to get scheduled things. Um, it's nice to just hand certain things off to people and that you can trust and they can actually get um, just filled up your calendar with revenue generating activities, as opposed to making sure that, um, you have somebody that's actually protecting your calendar itself. So the personal assistant, I think, was one of the biggest lessons learned and takeaway for me out of that is just having somebody that you can delegate all your extra stuff to, which is important, but you're able to focus on what drives revenue to the company, which is what is the main goal to help continue mm -hmm. to staff up, have people into your company How long does he have the personal assistant? I think, uh, oh, Katie, she might have maybe, maybe three months, maybe well, 90 days. Um, I would have assume the difference. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, business is probably getting it. So she's been able to, in the last 90 days, I would say help out in certain areas where people maybe have been. And once again, it's a new member mm -hmm. of the team. So you're getting them all up to speed. So I'm sure fast forward 90 more days or a full year into this, it's going to be just even better itself. But you could just tell once you add somebody to the team and others on there may be already spread pretty thin in different things. It allows that person, whoever is spread a little thin at the time to delegate and hand things off to that individual mm -hmm. that quite frankly, wasn't really what they should have been focusing on. Cause once they start to align with what their tasks are, what their goals are, and what really drives revenue with what their skill set is, it's just everybody's clicking on the right uh, calendar. So, I mean, he's been probably able to successfully, I would say, start to get some business paid out a little more faster. Um, money's moving a little bit better. So for the fact of a lot of companies, you have to rely on them to move assets. And so just having more manpower in there. And um, I think also just being efficient. I think when I was there, Man, I think <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is I was actually in his office and we didn't even have a meeting together. <laughs> so we had, I had so many meetings with everybody on their team that me and him are going to have a meeting after like later on this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we still went to dinner. We did all that, but there was no time because he had so many appointments that were already back to back to back and different things to do that we're going to catch up when mm -hmm. I'm here. But obviously, you know, we still chatted, but no, like actual meeting on the calendar itself.
So that tells you how busy that is. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you covered a lot of stuff that, that was uh, virtual, that was uh, tech-driven. Are there any live training opp opportunities for your advisors? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We actually have some – we have a lot of – I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of trainings coming up here in Houston. So we actually have one at the end of August. That's our advanced sales training. And that's going to be – so we have live trainings for advisors to better their craft better their founder story, more of just sales one-on-one -on -one advanced sales training. So that's what that particular live event is that we do for our advisors. Um, traditionally, those have been in Minnesota or Arizona, but we thought for our inaugural one that we wanted to do here in Houston, it's going to be here in Houston. So we're going to have a lot of not just our advisors here, but we're going to have some new prospect advisors that have been checking us out here over the last couple of months, maybe listening to this podcast. Um, this is a great opportunity to get some of the best sales training out there in the industry itself. And one of the things that we talk about at that event is for advisors that are doing some live workshops, um, just how to better connect with the customer how to really refine your story, how to connect, get people to help build trust and credibility. So for those that are doing a lot of in-person events and one-on-one -on -one training, or sorry, one-on-one -on -one appointments with uh, new prospects and clients, this is definitely an event that you want to come from. We had an advisor, our top advisor, who went to this event, um, our live training a couple months ago, and he already does a lot of dinner workshops. So he does a lot of workshops in his community and people come, they get a meal, but they also listen to him speak. And sure enough, so he adjusted one or two things that he got from this particular training and he ended up booking wow. hundred percent of the room as appointments. And that's, yeah. that's unheard of in our type of industry. Usually if you have like 17 people, maybe, you know, 12, um, is pretty good. Um, even if you got half of the room, that would be considered good, but 17 for 17, just for making one or two adjustments from how to relate and work the room a little bit better. So, um, absolutely. We do a lot of training for just personal growth for advisors, but most importantly, we're going to give you processes and systems to utilize, to help better your craft, get your message out there to attract the right person in person, also virtually, but this one's going to be more specifically on working on the advisor, personal growth. And then um, that's going to be able to just end up take his business to however he wants to take it, virtual or in person. You've covered a lot of ground here and uh, we're only talking the beginning of the summer. So you've got a lot more coming up personally and professionally, but is there something we've missed that you really wanted to make sure we covered today? Yeah, I think the one thing I, I wanted to mention too is when I was in the office at their at their actual office in Virginia, it was it was interesting because he does have some people that work remotely, and when we were going over that whole checking your six process, uh, process I realized how important it is to have a team that you're working with that has if they do financial technology or if you do a lot of trainings, it's important to have a lot of these recordings sitting somewhere. So it's not to where they have to get a hold of the Jeremy mm -hmm. at the company, or they have to get a hold of somebody. Because some people, you know, after hours, nine o'clock at night, some people watch TV, but some people work on their craft. So they'll just go and they'll listen to recordings, they'll listen to podcasts. And so I was able to, with some of those newer employees, and they were very grateful. They they actually knew it was there, but they didn't know exactly what was all in it. So they were able to see our AMP resource library. So this is our top advisor sharing what's working for them. So they now know where they can go to get some good ideas. They also know now where some of the additional training is. So staff members at InsureMark here, we do our Operational Success Academy. So as companies um, are actually hiring assistants this year, that's been a huge thing. A lot of my advisors have started to hire some new assistants or new marketing coordinators or whomever it may be, bringing new people in. We've done a lot of trainings here over the last several months and years at InsureMark, and those live within our Hubbard portal. So if you bring a new member on, they can go into Hubbard. They can click on as a new assistant, they can click on the Operational Success Academy, and they can learn all of our financial technology on demand. 
So what that does is not only do they get to leverage, so they don't have to necessarily talk to our uh, administrative staff, they can listen to those recordings. The advisor doesn't have to necessarily sit there and explain to them what all we're doing. So they're doing that on their own time. And then when those meetings take place with that new hire, with the decision maker or with the uh, whoever it may be with our company, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. coming with questions as opposed to the, the back and forth banter of 30 minutes of like, this is what this is, this is that. They can just watch a 40 minute webinar, essentially a replay webinar, and then during their actual meeting with the person that they wanted to speak to, it's just very proactive and productive within a 10, 15 minute call. It's, Hey, I had a question mm -hmm. on this, this, and this, and they knock it out. So the financial technology piece of it, having recordings is very important, especially as you grow your staff out. And I even had, uh, one of my advisors who's in, uh, Massachusetts. He told me after listening to the podcast, it was episode 64. It's titled the mm -hmm. entrepreneur blueprint with Mike Milligan. He just hired two people and he said that it was like perfect timing. He just hired these two people who just finished college and he listened to the podcast the day after that. And he was just fired up and just enthused of like, this is definitely the right decision because a lot of advisors today, they don't, I mean, they, they know it, but they don't know as much. And I've, I've just continued to hear the story. I had a guy in California where he just recently hired two people. He was a one man shop for years. He hired two people here in the last uh, 12 months. Now his second person was just a couple months ago and basically people that he already has relationships with, they weren't giving him all of their assets because they didn't think he was a real business almost. But now that he has staff and now that he has more people that are working on his behalf, all of a sudden the relationships are getting stronger. And I mean, it's just attracting more assets and more qualified people. So um, it's just a fascinating thing as we continue to uh, see advisors' businesses evolve as they continue to grow. So just importance of financial technology and having the right people in place to grow your business. I love being able to say, I'll have my people talk to your people. It's fine. <laughs> Patrice, you have too many people. <laughs> I can't even get to you. I can only get to you on this, but okay, we'll talk about that later. But Jeremy, how can advisors reach you if they want to learn some more? They can reach us at uh, insuremarkamp.com forward slash Jeremy. Uh, feel free to go to our website, link up, uh, link up with us on LinkedIn or YouTube. So we are we are out there in social media. So feel free to reach out to, to our team. And we look forward to hearing from you and check out some previous podcast episodes to learn a little bit more about us. All right, folks, stay cool and safe this summer. And of course, follow the podcast you want to know when the new episodes are ready for you and share with others. I'm Patrice Sikora, and thanks for being with us. <laughs>